Hello and welcome to the third installment of my War Thunder flight model analysis series. Today I will be reviewing the BF-109 F4. I heard that this plane just got a new flight model and I decided to check it out and see how it performed and how it performed especially in comparison to the historical BF-109 F4. And as always before we get started let's just take a quick look-see at the stat card. And uh, this time I remembered to tick the historical tab and so it's not showing arcade stats this time and we can see that the top speed right now is 665 kilometers per hour on an altitude of 6,250 meters the turn time is 20 seconds and the rate of climb is 20 meters per second and yeah that's about it so let's get on to the testing alright so as usual the first thing that we're gonna test with this aircraft is its top speed and as you can see in this German chart depicting the BF-109 F4's performance in both the climb and top speed using full emergency power, the BF-109's top speed was around 670 kilometers per hour on the dot almost at around 6,100 meters. And also the top speed at sea level was around 635, let's say between 635 and 640 kilometers per hour. Anything in that radius would, I could say, would be accurate. Alright, so here we are on altitude at about 6,200 meters, and we are holding very steady at 641 kilometers per hour, which is a whopping 29 kilometers per hour slower than what the chart indicated that the BF-109 would fly at with full emergency power at this altitude. And similarly to the on altitude test, the BF-109 is also underperforming at sea level with about 505 kilometers per hour being the maximum speed I could push the thing to. It is underperforming by about 30 to 35 kilometers per hour. Alright, now onto the climbing test segment of the video. As you can see, this is the same chart from earlier, except I'm going to be focusing on the left side of the chart this time instead of the right side. And this side indicates the climb rate of the aircraft and you can see the BF-109 is the second one from the left, the F-4 that is. And basically what I did to test this is I took the time it took for the BF-109 to reach 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 10,000 meters and then I compared those times to however long it took me to reach them in game. Alright, so here I am in the hangar with my BF-109 F-4. It is indeed fully upgraded as always. I'm going to test fly the BF-109 with, with no load, no cannon pods, with a full tank of fuel, and on a reference flight model instead of current as I did before. It didn't seem to make too much of a difference, but I'll do it just in case. And I am going to be basically doing the same procedure as always. I'm going to start the timer as soon as I leave the ground, and I'm going to be marking down the time as I reach certain altitudes. As I said before, that's 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 10,000 meters. And I'm going to be climbing steady between around 280 to 290 IAS kilometers per hour the whole way. And instead of, I guess, forcing you guys to watch this entire time, I'll just cut this and skip straight to the results. Alright, so what you're seeing here is the actual amount of time it took for the BF-109 F4 to get to these certain altitudes in real life. You can see that's 1.5 minutes to 2,000 meters, 3.5 minutes to 4,000, 6 to 6,000, 9 to 8,000, and 14 to 10,000. And let's compare that to the numbers I got in-game. Alright, so as you can see the numbers are a bit different. I, it took me a little bit longer to reach 2,000 meters, just slightly. Uh, it took me the same exact amount of time to reach 4,000 and uh, a little bit shorter to reach 6,000 pretty significantly shorter to reach 8,000 and then the performance of the aircraft just takes a huge dump after that yeah, it takes me a long time to reach 10,000 meters but it's still in less amount of time than the real life version but basically just because I think it was over climbing at these uh medium high altitudes like between 6,000 and 8,000 for example. Alright just to give you a bit of a visual example this is what the climb rate chart would look like for the real life performance of the F4 and this is what it would look like for the in-game performance of the BF-109 F4. 
And for the last test, I'm going to be doing something a bit different than I usually do. This is for all you full real battle players out there, and what I'm basically going to be testing here is the stall and spin characteristics of the BF-109 F4. I'm in my Mustang Mark 1A right now, and that's just to show you how a normal plane should react. I am doing a powerless climb, I stall, I keep the elevator pulled, I go into a violent spin, I let go of the stick to regain control, but a little bit too late, evidently. And yeah, that's basically how a normal plane should usually react. They stall and spin whenever in that sort of scenario. And I'll show you how the BF 109F4 reacts. Alright, here I am in my BF 109F4 with my joystick. And I'm about to test the stall characteristics of it. I'm going to do a powerless loop. And. I'm about to lose all of my speed, so the aircraft just kind of does this plateau type maneuver, it just falls over, it doesn't spin. I keep the elevator pulled, it still doesn't spin. And basically at this point I'm just doing whatever I, I can to try to get it to spin. I, I still have the elevator completely pulled, I have my stick, <laughs> I, I, I'm holding my stick all the way back, and it, it's not it's just not responding like it should. It, um, as you can see, I'm just kind of gliding here with my elevator pulled in 0% throttle. And uh, this took me by surprise a little bit. So, yeah, BF-109 does not spin under these circumstances. Alright, so now what I'm going to be testing is the ability of the 109 to spin in a flat turn. And you can see I'm in my Mustang again. I'm just turning and I exceed my angle of attack. I go into a spin, I push the stick forward, I regain control, and I pull up slowly. And that's basically how any normal aircraft should react whenever you exceed your angle of attack by turning too hard. Alright, so here I'm in my 109 again, about to test the horizontal turning, the tendency to spin, or I should say the tendency not to spin because as you can see I'm pulling my elevator all the way back my stick is all the way pulled and it's not spinning I try to get into the left side again elevator is fully pulled nothing I, I, I just can't get the aircraft to stall even at lower speeds I, I, I still don't get any results <laughs> it, it just doesn't stall or spin so basically I eventually crashed into the ground because I just lost that much speed from trying to get this thing to spin. Alright, well anyways, that concludes this episode of War Thunder Flight Model Analyses. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in my next video.